I'm Jesse with Torque King TV. Today we're going to introduce our latest product, the Master Overhaul Kit for the transfer case of the Mahindra Rocksor. This is our complete main kit containing three sub kits. We have the TK2059 um, bearing kit. We have the TK2075 gasket and seal kit. We have the TK2076 small parts kit. Put together with silicone and thread locker, that makes a TK2034 master overhaul kit. And now let's go a little more into detail. In our gasket and seal kit, we've got the front output gasket, we've got the uh, bottom cover gasket, we've got your output seals for the uh, front and rear output, two shift rail seals, a speedometer seal, and the rear uh, bearing retainer shim gasket. For the main bearing kit, we have input uh, front and rear bearing and race, front output shaft, roller bearing, and the main output shaft support bearings, as well as needle bearings for the counter shaft. In the small parts kit, we've got two output nuts. We've got the three spacers that go between your needle bearings on your counter shaft. You've got the ball bearing retainer that retains the ball bearing in the front output housing. You've got the snap ring that holds your thrust washer onto the low gear, transfer case low gear, as well as the thrust washer. Three cotter pins for the transfer case shift linkage, the front output bushing, transfer case drain plug gasket, side, uh, side thrust bushings for the counter shaft, as well as some wire that holds the bolt in one of the shift forks. To finish the kit off, we have ultra black RTV and blue thread locker. Since I happen to have a box full of parts here, I will also show you exactly where these components go. This is the input shaft. This takes power from the transmission and routes it through the transfer case. You have a, a front and rear tapered roller bearing that goes on here. You have your counter shaft, which is held in place by a uh, counter shaft pin, which these are also available at TorqueKing.com. Not included in, the, in this kit, but available separately if you need one. The needle bearings right in here, as well as the spacers that separate two rows of needle bearings. The side bushings kind of squeeze on each side of the counter shaft. You have your output shaft, which gets another sprocket on it. You have a bearing front and rear, excuse me, front and rear on this main shaft. Your thrust bearing and one snap ring goes on the front side of your low gear. Bushing goes inside the front of the shaft, the main shaft, to support the front output shaft. Ball bearing presses on the front output shaft and is retained in the front output housing. Yes, my son? What's your bad news? We're out of water. We'll be back after these messages. Joining us for the rest of this video will be the big boss, James. 
who happens to be wearing his work shirt, just like daddy. So he's going to help me out for the remainder of this video. These shafts, when you're checking for wear, when you rebuild your transfer case, you want to make sure that the surface, any gears rotate on, isn't scored or burned or grooved or otherwise not looking very pretty. You want to do the same for your um, counter shaft pin. The one that I took out of this case, it didn't have a whole lot of miles on it, uh, but it did look pretty good. So as long as you keep oil in them and you don't have some kind of other catastrophic failure, your pin should look good. That's right. Every bearing in this, with the exception of the uh, roller bearings in the counter shaft, are a press fit. When this gear, this uh, low range gear, on your main output shaft. Uh, when it's installed, the bearing goes right here with the snap ring and the thrust washer underneath of it. That is a pain to get out. In most cases, your thrust washer will be in good shape itself, but we include one in the kit because there's not a lot of room in there. And uh, I did happen to nick mine a little bit when I was taking this transfer case apart. So we included that so you don't need to worry about it. Um, the snap ring in there, that looked a little worse for wear as well, just because the bearing is pressed right up against everything. And it's pretty hard unless you got a specialty um, blind bearing puller. And I don't happen to have any that are this small. So I was using it with more conventional tools that most people would probably have if they did many repairs in their own garage. I did notice that the uh, four-wheel drive collar had uh, some defective broaching in the front teeth here. Uh, when these vehicles were first released in 2018, uh, even some early 2019 models, uh, there was complaints of going into four-wheel drive. Well, I found the issue. It must have been a bad batch. The way it, the way it looked on this, it was definitely uh, a tool that had probably produced several of these before they changed the tool out. Uh, this one I did file with the Dremel tool to fix it. Uh, the issue is that it kind of puts a lot of pressure on just two points once you do get it into gear. Uh, eventually it, you know, it, it gets easier and easier and it will work. Um, it does kind of wear on the hard surface, the hard facing on the uh, output shaft. But, um, you know, it, it finally wore in on mine and I would have never known I still had you know, what the issue was, I still had an issue unless I pulled it apart. So that was one thing that I found. If yours does have it, you'll be able to tell that the holes aren't, you know, exactly square in the front, and you can fix that with just a Dremel tool. The counter shaft, you also want to make sure there is no uh, burring or scarring or anything on the inside of it. This one looks good. Uh, it looks like it's just starting to get broke in, uh, so it's still usable. You also want to check all your gear teeth to make sure they're okay. And your input shaft, you wanna make sure the splines aren't getting hogged out, the teeth look good. Um, a bearing spinning on these, probably not gonna happen because every bearing on here is a press fit, except the needle bearings. One thing I would like to point out, when you take these transfer cases off the transmission, there is a spacer right in front of the front tapered roller bearing. It actually smashes up against the transmission and it holds the, the input shaft from walking back and forth. Uh, there's been a couple people that had their transfer case out for whatever reason and they put it back together. This stuck to the transmission and fell off when they weren't looking or it fell out, it, who knows what happened to it. They put it together. Transfer case did not last very long without this. So you wanna make sure you have this. They're not available. Um, I have thought about making these. We might still, um, you know, if you do lose yours, you could probably get something to work. Uh, this is a hardened, this particular original part is a hardened, uh, hardened spacer. Uh, would you need a hardened piece of metal? It'd probably be nice, but if you were in a pinch, um, you know, just making something out of some heavy wall tubing, if you had something laying around, would probably work. 
not currently available. Uh, looking into it, uh, we'll see what we can find, but there's no shims that exist of this size. And as far as I can tell, uh, Mahindra says you need to get this with a new transfer case, which is unfortunate. On that note, I would also like to highlight they do not uh, have a listing. It's not even on their drawing. That shim's not on the drawing. This wire that holds, uh, this lock wire that holds this uh, nut on, on your shift fork. Just one of the shift forks has this, by the way. Uh, the other one is held in with a roll pin. This wire's not on the drawing. Uh, I can't find a part number for it, but it's standard tie wire of transfer cases of the era. Guess what we happen to have? They also don't list this uh, input shaft support bushing. I don't know if you gotta buy a whole um, you know, output main shaft or what, but we've got bushings made up for these to replace. The rear bearing retainer output, sh output bearing retainer shim uh, is a specific thickness. I've got a couple thicknesses. All the research I've done doesn't indicate that, you know, to use multiple shims. It, I have found a specification somewhere for the, um, the backlash um, specifications. I don't remember exactly what that is, but basically you want to make sure that this shaft isn't tight when you get it installed. It should, you should be able to feel it move back and forth. That way when it warms up, the bearings don't get tight and burn up on you. We've got, um, these gaskets are also uh, original equipment thickness and original equipment material. These bearings, as long as we can still get them, all the tapered uh, roller bearings are USA Timken with the ball bearing being a Nachi Japanese bearing. With everything that's going on in the world, sometimes Timken USA is hard to get. We've had some Timken other countries, and we've also had to sub for uh, either Koyo Japan or Koyo USA. At least right now, I've got Timkins uh, for the tapered bearings, but if we did have to sub to Koyo, that is also a very good bearing. The wear pattern on these uh, original bearings, uh, like I said, they only had a couple thousand miles on them. See that wear there? Looks cloudy. That's not what bearings are usually supposed to look like when they break in. They should get shinier. They shouldn't get duller in, in appearance. Um, I don't know if the hardness isn't right or if it's just um, material imperfections that are just coming out as it breaks in. I'm not sure. They didn't, you know, overheat or nothing. In most cases, they're probably fine. Um, I This was the original transfer case in this unit. I couldn't get it all put back together in time when we had to move to this bigger facility. So I unfortunately had to get another transfer case, which still has the original equipment bearings, several thousand miles on them, uh, up and down the highway, interstate speed, well, highway speed, starting to drive a little slower in my old age. Plus it gets better mileage at 65. Who knew? Something else you wanna check for wear, and it shouldn't happen, but just the faces of the counter shaft gear. It does have a uh, quite a bit softer metal up against it. As long as you don't have some kind of other catastrophic failure and stuff wedges in between them, you know, metal chunks or whatever, should be fine. But that is something you wanna check. The main transmission case. You remove the pin from what would be the rear of the case when it's installed in the vehicle. The factory drawing indicates it goes the other way. I can tell you it does not. How did I find that out? Don't ask. Well, you can ask. I'll probably be too embarrassed to tell you. And of course I figured it out, but you know, when I was past the point of no return. So yeah, this original counter shaft, eh, I wouldn't use it again. We'll just say that, we'll leave it at that. A couple of other things you wanna look for is where on the plastic 
uh, driven and drive speedometer gears. They shouldn't, you know, it's a, it's a, it's the right plastic for the job. Shouldn't have any issue with them. Um, they're they're always oiled. It's, you know, in the bottom of the, tra the transfer case essentially, you know, with you know below the oil level. That's right. Uh, but it is something you want to check, and don't forget about the little oil baffle that goes on right behind the uh, drive gear for the speedometer. This is sandwiched on the rear output shaft behind the yoke, and really all it is for is to keep oil from being washed directly into the seal. Um, if you forget to put it in, it shouldn't be an issue, but uh, just be aware that it's there. It's not really a wear item, so I'm not including it in the kit. Uh, this is one particular part I don't have at this time. If there ever got to be a demand for it, I could probably get some. Every other uh, piece in this kit is available separately, as well as a lot of other small parts, like uh, detent uh, springs and the, and the poppet balls uh, for the shift mechanism. Uh, just about uh, every other small part that's not a wear item, uh, I've, I've either got or have on the way or getting ready to make. The actual hard parts, I don't have it this time, but it is something that I'm going to be getting into. I don't think that these will wear out anytime soon. Somebody might be able to break one. There's plenty of other weak spots uh, for something to break like a U-joint or, a, I don't know, a transmission reverse gear from what I've heard a couple of times. Um, you know, these, these transfer cases are pretty rugged. There's, they'll, they'll take a lot. I mean... I broke a RCV axle shaft and nothing else. So U-joints held up are good. Uh, cold forge U-joints um, for the drive shafts. Um, that should have been, the U-joint should have been the weakest link. It just happened, to, you know, stars aligned and it was an axle shaft that broke. Um, being full locked probably didn't help in an off-camber situation. I'm sure everything just kind of localized. So these transfer cases are good, they're solid. As long as uh, if you hear anything funny, you know, funny noises, uh, just make sure you get that checked out. Don't be afraid to drain the oil, check for glitter. Uh, this, I mean, these, it's normal to have some glitter as these break in. Uh, we won't get into machining tolerances, not being as good as some other applications. But for what the vehicle is, they're great. Um, you know, I've had glitter in the first couple of oil changes, nothing catastrophic failed, well, nothing failed. Um, you know, that sh axle shaft was the first failure on this ever, besides fuel gelling up once, twice. Um, yeah, if there's glitter, you know, if there, if, you know, change oil, if there's more glitter, you might want to check on it especially if it's starting to make noise. Use good oil. When I took this transfer case apart, it was sitting, let's see, I drove it, it's been over a year now. I drove it, in, uh, drove it inside, parked it that morning, and then it was the following afternoon when I got this out and pulled apart, there was still foam everywhere in, inside the transfer case. That was on the factory oil. Um, I don't know if it's been changed. Uh, you, you know, the, the factory oil has been updated since, but I did start using a different oil that I drove. Not, and I didn't even drive much. I just drove into town, around town, and it foamed. Um, I've been driving down the highway, getting this thing hot. I don't have a temp gun here that reads that kind of temperature, but I don't want to touch it. It's, it's hot enough. It's not hot enough to where you need a Viton seal, you know, the, the Buna rubber seals still hold up fine. Um, but it's, you know, hotter than I want to touch. And I've pulled the plug out and stuck a scope in there, no foam. So you really want to make sure you get a good oil because once oil starts foaming, you know, there's, there can be just as much or more air um, between the gear teeth than oil. So you want to make sure you, you run a good oil. Um, it is a, a GL4 spec 
GL5 oil is hard on yellow metal. I've been running a GL5. One day, sometime, I'm gonna check the, the yellow metal parts and see what they look like. Um, if you get the right GL5 combination, they've got um, you know, all kinds of pacifiers and inhibitors and stuff like that to prevent the oxidation, over oxidation of the yellow metal. It, it's hard to get a, uh, a good answer when you don't know all of exactly what's in the oil and you don't know the exact chemical composition of the yellow metal. Um, I'm sure if it had lead in it, it'd be affected differently than if it had uh, aluminum in, in, the, in the bronze. So using a good oil is definitely a step in the right direction. Do you have anything to add? Yeah. Hmm. Yep. And it goes on. Yep. Just like that. And since we have all the parts out in front of us, I'll give you an accurate uh, representation of how this stuff looks when it's inside the case if you haven't already taken a peek. Your input shaft is the highest gear uh, vertically. And then your counter shaft gear sits at an angle kind of like that. Below it, the input shaft engages the high range gear. That. And then you've got your lowest gear vertically, how the transfer case is mounted. So we know what these do. This, the input shaft is always driving the counter shaft, no matter what gear your uh, transfer case is in. It could be in neutral, it could be in four low, four high, two high, doesn't matter. If the engine's if the transmission is in gear and the engine is running, these shafts are turning. This is why when you flat tow this vehicle, you wanna have your transfer case in neutral so it's not spinning all this extra stuff and then turning the transmission as well. I don't know how good I am at holding this, but when installed, the main gear engages, whoop. When installed, the, main, the powers get driven off the small um, counter shaft gear into the big uh, output shaft gear. And you get a one to one ratio off of these parts, just like that. So the input shaft, assuming the input shaft gear is always turning, the counter shaft gear is always turning, the low range gear, when it's in high range, just free spins all the time, just free spins. When you shift into neutral, well, first we'll go into four high since that's the next uh, um, gear to, to select. That will move your locking collar to engage your front drive shaft. Once that's engaged, the next step, we'll get rid of these, the next step is neutral. And what that does is shift your big uh, output shaft gear in between the big and little gears on the counter shaft. So now everything can free spin, you're in neutral. If you continue shifting into four low, it shifts, it continues to shift this big gear over and see those teeth there? They line up into those teeth. And these two gears then become one. So now the low gear is locked into the shaft by the high gear. And as you can see, the high gear is still not contacting the high gear area of the counter shaft, the low gear is always in contact with the counter shaft. It's just now locked in. So now you have your reduction ratio off of that. You shift back into neutral. It disengages your low range gear. 
you continue to shift into four high, your big gear engages your small gear, which is always turning when this is turning. And then if you continue to shift out of four high to two high, it moves this collar back. Pretty space age technology, if you ask me. Right, son? Mm -hmm. I'd also like to add that if you've got some miles on your transfer case and you begin to start having some shift issues, um, it could be little bits of glitter getting in uh, where your shift rods go. They're a pretty decent fit. If much of anything gets in there and kind of builds up, these are going to start sticking. Um, oftentimes you can, uh, you know, break the transfer case down and take these out and clean everything real good, put it back together. That solves your issue. Um, if it's something more than that, it could be um, maybe the roll pin starting to come loose in one or the bolt, which shouldn't come loose with the tie wire, right? Mm -hmm. But stranger things have happened. So if you're having any kind of problem with your transfer case, it's better to get it before you need some major parts. Well, that's all we've got for this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time right here on Torque King TV. What do you say, Jim? Time to go home? Oh, guess it's time to keep working. We'll see what else we can come up with. <laughs>